Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation with complex numbers. So how do we know we're going to be solving for complex numbers? Well first of all it's this channel A plus BI which is all about complex numbers and we have I on the right hand side. What is I? I is a letter but at the same time it stands for a number whose uh, square equals negative one. In other words I is the square root of negative 1, the principal square root of negative 1. What is the square root of a negative number, right? Those are imaginary and, you know, weird numbers that are not real. If you need the complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. If you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry problems, go ahead and check out my other channel, CyberMath, Cyber with an S. Great, so let's see how we can solve this problem in at least two different ways. So I'm going to introduce the first method first. For my first method, and I think the methods are entirely different in my opinion, but let me know what you think. First, I want to go ahead and split this up into two fractions. 1 over cosine theta plus sine theta over cosine theta. As you know, if you have something like this, you can always split it up. It's kind of like the opposite of adding, but it's not subtracting. It's kind of like unadding the fraction. So now we're going to go ahead and look at it separately. Like what is 1 over cosine theta? It is secant theta, right? The reciprocal of cosine is called secant. And sine over cosine, as you should know, if you've done a little bit of trigonometry, even if it's very basic, you should know that this is equal to tangent theta, which is tan, T-A-N, and this whole thing is equal to I. So you might be thinking, how do we solve something like this? Well, secant and tangent are very closely related. And again, if you've done a little bit of trigonometry, you would know this. Or if you've, done, if you've done calculus, you should definitely know this. If you've done some limits or some identities, you always use these identities. So here's how it goes. How are secant and tangent related, right? That's my question. To be able to understand it better, uh, we're going to go ahead and square both sides. Squaring both sides give us tangent squared and secant squared, which is good because secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared. Of course, you could also write secant as 1 plus tangent squared, the square root of that, with a plus minus sign, but that wouldn't be very desirable in the original problem because you would still need to square both sides to get rid of the radical. You don't want the radical, get rid of it. So now we have something nicer because if you expand it, you're going to get secant squared plus tangent squared, which is a squared plus b squared. That's how I do it first. And I multiply by 2 times secant times tangent. And the whole thing is equal to i squared, which is negative 1. Remember, I already told you i squared is negative 1. That's something you should definitely know, right? Awesome. Now let's go ahead and see how we can simplify this. Remember, we have a nice identity, which I already told you, right? Secant squared can be written as 1 plus tangent squared. Of course, this means that tangent squared can also be written in terms of secant, but let's keep it that way for now. So we have now secant squared, which I can write as 1 plus tangent squared. But another tangent squared comes in, right? So that becomes 1 plus 2 tangent squared theta plus 2 secant theta tangent theta equals negative 1. Again, this looks messy somewhat, but when you do something about this, it's going to actually turn into something super duper nice. How is that possible? Subtract 1 from both sides, you're going to get 2 tangent squared theta plus 2 secant theta tangent theta equals negative 2. Does it look familiar to you? Now we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by 2, and that'll do the trick, and you'll see now it's just amazing. Tangent squared, and before I started solving the problem with the first method, I didn't know that this was going to work, but it just works super duper nice. Now, we have something like this, right? And again, how do you solve it? We have tangent squared, we have the product. Here's the trick. Add 1 to both sides, and boom, it's going to work again. Miracles, right? 1 plus tangent squared plus secant times tangent equals 0. Getting a 0 is really cool. On top of that, we have 1 plus tangent squared, which can be written as secant squared. Yay! So we kind of go back and forth between these identities, but they're very helpful, as you can see. Now, this is factorable, so we can factor out secant theta, 
and then we get secant theta plus tangent theta equals zero. Super duper nice because now our equation is factored and in a very simple form. Now, if you look at each piece separately, for example, if secant theta is zero, what does that mean? It means one over cosine is zero. Uh-oh, isn't that weird? Does that mean cosine is one over zero, but one over zero is undefined? It's not like zero to the power zero, where zero to the power zero is equal to one. And if you don't believe that, go ahead and check out my video right here. It's also in the description down below. But one over cosine cannot be zero because you don't want cosine to be one over zero. One over zero is, uh-oh, no, no, you can't do that, right? So what does that mean? We don't get any solutions from here. It's impossible. Okay, let's look at the other piece, secant plus tangent theta, maybe that can be zero. Why not, right? Okay, let's go ahead and write this as one over cosine theta and write this as sine theta over cosine theta and then boom, another miracle happens and we can go ahead and add these two because they have a common denominator, nice, and this is equal to zero. Wait a minute, what is wrong with that? Well, if you look at the original problem, the original problem said one plus sine theta divided by cosine theta is supposed to be i. How can something be i and zero at the same time? Does i equal to zero? No, not really. i squared plus one is equal to zero, yes, but i does not equal zero, as far as I know, right? Do you agree? So anyways, this is impossible. Wait, I'm confused. Math is not mathing. What is going on here? Well, we don't have a solution from this piece either because this is impossible. So what's that supposed to mean? We have no solutions for this equation? Well, before we conclude, let's go ahead and look at the second method because I think second method can give you a better idea or another idea at least, right? So we're going to start with the original problem again. And then this time we're going to approach it in a, from a complex number perspective. Cross multiply. And you, you'll probably know what I'm talking about if you are familiar with Euler's formula. If not, that's perfectly fine because Euler said many years ago, thank you very much, Euler, by the way. You're awesome. You're the, you're the best, by far the best, I think. Okay. Cosine, plus, uh, cosine theta plus I sine theta is equal to E to the I theta. This is a beautiful equation, and you can actually call this the most beautiful equation in math, and there are some videos about it, but where they replace theta with pi, so on and so forth. But anyways, it's just beautiful. Elegant, gorgeous, amazing. So how does that help us though, right? Here, we don't have that. Yes and no. We can get there. How? Let's go ahead and bring the sine over to the other side. So kind of write it as I cosine theta minus sine theta equals one. And then we're gonna do a little trick. And these tricks are kind of like, sometimes people ask like, how on earth you came up with this? I didn't invent it, some, some, somebody thought about it and I kind of copied their method, or maybe I thought about it, who knows? It's not too hard to think if you know, if you have some of these tools, right? So multiply both sides by negative i, and then you're gonna get negative i squared cosine theta plus i sine theta equals one. Now, what did I tell you about i squared? i squared is negative one, so negative i squared is positive one, boom, it's gone. Now we have the beautiful equation cosine theta plus i sine theta, which is, e to the i theta, and it's equal to one. Does that mean i theta is equal to zero and theta is zero? And no, it's not that simple. We're gonna have to complexify it. So we're gonna write the one as e to the power. We're gonna write the, by the way, I forgot to multiply the right hand side. I just realized it's supposed to be negative i because I'm multiplying one by negative i. Anyways, this doesn't change the left hand side. So we still have e to the i theta, but on the right hand side, we have negative i. So we need to complexify this, and to complexify it, we're gonna go ahead and consider the argand plane. Our negative i is gonna appear here, basically one unit away from zero. The angle it makes can be measured in two ways, either this way or that way. I like the other way because we should always measure between negative pi and pi, so you don't wanna use something like three pi over two. Even though you can, we would like to use negative pi over two, which is the principal argument, I think, right? Am I right? So anyways, Here's what you can do. You can write the negative i as, it, because it's argument, I mean, the modulus is one, you don't need it. In general, uh, complex number can be written as this, but if r is one, don't worry about it. And now we have e to the power i times negative pi, right? Wait, is that where negative one is? Yeah, negative, negative pi, hmm. 
negative pi over 2, sorry about that. It's negative pi over 2. And of course, you're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi to it, so I'm going to add 2 pi n. And of course, I have to multiply the whole thing theta by i. And this gives us the following. From here we get, because i cancels out, theta equals negative pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. But guess what happens? Let's go ahead and rewrite the original equation one more time, and you'll see what I'm talking about. This was our original problem, right? Now notice that if theta is negative pi over 2 or anything added to it, like multiples of 2 pi, like 3 pi over 2, cosine would be 0, because you're basically right here where cosine is 0. Cosine is 0 here and here, right? Pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. If cosine is 0, this will be undefined and possible because it's supposed to equal i, and i is well-defined. Well, sort of, right? Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out A plus BI and CyberMath. And bye-bye.